Hello. So I think the first most important thing for you to know before we start this video is that I don't own a dog. My sister owns a dog. Her name is Lola. She's the cutest dog in the entire world. And my sister is also getting married in less than a month, which is very exciting. And I was thinking to myself, with my newfound sewing skills, as of a month ago, what nice thing could I make my sister for her wedding? Clearly not a dress, because I've only made one of them. I've thought about a robe for her to get ready in, but the problem with that is that I would want to buy nice fabric, and I feel like I'm not good enough at sewing yet to work with expensive of fabric because it would kind of just be a waste on me. And then the only other option was like pajamas for her to get ready in and I've never made pajamas. Since filming this I actually have made pajamas and you can watch that video here. I want to I wanna do something well. And that leaves me <laughs> with only one option in my head which is to make Lola an outfit for the wedding day. So that's what we're doing. We are making my sister's dog a cute outfit slash harness for her to wear during the wedding weekend. Do I have any experience in this? No. <laughs> no. However, I have watched a lot of YouTube videos about it, and that makes me feel oddly qualified. And the first thing that we're going to do is make a pattern. Let's get to the pattern. My sister sent me two measurements to make this pattern, one around Lola's belly and one around her neck. I used these plus this video on the screen to kind of makeshift a pattern for myself. It worked out fine. For the bottom measurement around her stomach, I added two inches on both sides to add Velcro, and for the top, I did the same. Then I just drew out that shape, folded it in half, and cut to make my pattern. derpiest thing I've ever made. <laughs> but I think this should work. Now it's time to move on to finding fabric. So let's go explore my fabric stash. Or maybe don't come. It's embarrassing. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ta-da! All right, so this is kind of weird, but welcome to the floor corner area of my apartment. Here's what we're working with. We have leftover wraps from my 70s outfits. I don't think have a big enough chunk of scraps with that fabric. We have enough of this sheer star space fabric. My Mercure Tours Valentine's Day dress to probably make a ruffle, so we'll save that. And potentially we have some pink fabric. Other stuff we have. White flower bed sheet. There is a ton of this. Yellow, but I feel like this is kind of not the right vibe. With this I don't know. This could be cute on a dog. All right, here's what we're working with. This white flower pattern is definitely the most fabric and would definitely work. That's the most probable. It's cute. It would look it would cute on a, dog. on a dog. This kind of picnic that I bought at Goodwill really gives me less like dress energy and more like harness energy. Lola would look cute in anything. Remember how cute she is. Just think about how cute she is as we decide this. And then we have this. <laughs> love to do pink. I think that's the most like dress energy. So I'm gonna lay this out and see if we can make this work. But I don't want to patchwork it. I want it to look nice. So it probably won't. But we're gonna try. Okay here it is on one of the scraps. I think we're gonna go with the pink and then I will do the lining in this white. And if we end up liking the white more then maybe we could just make it reversible. Would it be reversible? Is that how velcro works? I guess we're gonna find out together. Let's get to it. Step one was ironing because this had been sitting in the bottom of my closet and it definitely needed it. Okay, now it's just time to pin it down and- I'm gonna stop talking to you like this. Okay, bye. So I moved on to pinning down the pattern to the fabric and also gave myself a minor stab wound. Ow. Then it was time to cut this pattern out both on the pink fabric and on the fabric I was going to use for the lining. Okay, so we have our front piece, we have our lining, and I bought what I thought was interfacing, but turns out it's not. We're gonna go to Joanne's. I think it's important to at least have interfacing where the Velcro is. So let's go to Joanne's. Hi. Ah! No. Can you see me? I just moved to suburbia and before I lived in Tennessee and the Joann's was like 45 minutes away and now the Joann's is like six minutes away. Definitely feeding my craft, my craft insanity, insanity because we can just go to Joann's. 
whenever we want. Or Chuck E. Cheese, but we're not gonna go there. <laughs> okay, we're back from Joann's with interfacing. I think what I'm gonna do is just cut the pattern out on the interface and just interface all of this pattern instead of just where the Velcro is because I bought a yard. I didn't know, I didn't know how much to buy. I've never bought interfacing before. And I don't know how to use it. Let's hope that works. And then we'll get to sewing. Let's get started. My first attempt at interfacing did not go well because I had it upside down and actually got stuck to my iron. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> but once I figured it out, it was pretty simple and I added interfacing to both this pink fabric and to the white fabric. Okay, so now we have two pieces with interfacing on the wrong sides. And I think the next move is to put them together and sew them together with leaving an opening so I can flip them inside out so that they will look nice and pretty on the seams. I'm going to go ahead and pin these right sides facing and then I'm going to sew basically along all of this except for here so that I can flip it inside out here. I realize I could stop at the bottom. That'd be the easiest way to flip. It might not matter. And I might just be making things more difficult. It probably doesn't matter. So actually I will leave most of the bottom undone. I don't know. We'll just decide when I'm at the sewing machine, but I'm going to make sure to leave a place for me to flip it inside out so that it looks nice. So let's get to pinning and sewing. Once I had sewn everything down, I clipped down the excess fabric and made little tiny clips on the curves so that they would lie flat once I had flipped it inside out. Hello. It's been a while since I've thought about this project. I got a little bit distracted, but I'm back now. Today, I'm ready. There are only a few things we have to do. I bought these to attach to the back of the harness, and then we need to add a ruffle to the bottom. One of the videos I saw just directly put it on the wrong side. I think I could do that, but this is looking for me. Pretty neat. Before we add the strap and the harness bit, I'm going to seam rip on the bottom and add a ruffle, basically kind of applying it to the inside and then top stitching so that it can be cased within the two layers. I should have just attached it to the wrong side of one of these so that when I sewed them together, it would be easy and perfect, but um, I didn't think that far ahead. So we're gonna do it now. First, make a ruffle. We can attach the ruffle and then we'll do the harness, add Velcro. Let's just get started. To make a ruffle, you're going to wanna cut out a rectangle of fabric and then put your sewing machine on the longest straight stitch on the longest straight stitch setting you have. Gosh, that was hard to say. The longest straight stitch setting, wow. On that, put it on that and don't back stitch on either end and then just pull it so that it creates that ruffle at the top. I feel medium about this, but I think we're gonna go with it. I don't even know if you can see me. Let's do our best. <laughs> Okay, here we are. The bottom ruffle is added. It is not neat. Please don't look closely. The next thing we're going to do is to add a little place to put this on. We're gonna add this here. I have prepped this. I basically cut out a pair of old jeans to use this kind of strong, sturdy bit here. And I'm going to use that as the center of this. So it'll look something like this. <laughs> Okay, so basically step one, I'm going to sew about here and then add this on and then sew the rest of the way and then I will flip and sew this line down. I did it everyone. I broke my first needle. Okay, so I put a new needle on the machine and the status update is that this looks awful, <laughs> but I have a plan. Step one, I'm going to sew here and then do a line carefully up this side so that at least it matches. And then I'm going to use some of the leftover tool and make a ruffle with the exact same method I did on the Cure Tours dress and place it here and here so that at the very least, maybe some of that volume and poofiness will cover some of 
whatever this is. <laughs> Listen, I taught myself how to sew two months ago. I don't expect anything I currently make to look in any way professional. We're just here to learn. Let's get to making that line and then we will make some ruffles. And then all we have to do is add Velcro and then we're done. After sewing the other side, it was looking like this. Then I took my sheer fabric and just pushed it through the sewing machine before it was ready to make a ruffle. Then I added that and then I added Velcro. Here she is. That's the back. Here she is. I velcroed straps here, one up here, and then on the reverse side. I go home in about a week, and at that point, we can actually see if this fits Lola. And until then, I hope you have a lovely week, and I'll see you at the wedding. so much for watching if you enjoyed watching feel free to subscribe i make videos where i teach myself how to sew knit and do lots of crafts if you have a floofy friend and you decide to make them one of these please show me how they look below i will see you next time you're feeling crafty bye